The Nubian pyramids, a series of hundreds of pyramidal structures and ruins, making up part of the ancient cities of Kush and Meroe. The structures incorporate styles from many different, equally ancient ruins from around the world, displaying to all the reach of this once global civilization. The first recorded settlers in this part of Sudan date back as far as 300,000 years, with the civilization that is claimed to have built and indeed painted these structures are dated as far back as 4,000 years. The city of Kush is renowned for having the finest pottery in all the Nile Valley, evidence of the builders' past capabilities. Yet what we found the most interesting about the ruins is a decorative piece found within one of these ancient structures within the ancient city of Meroe, amongst over 200 sandstone pyramids, a depiction can be found within a rather peculiar mural. Like that of the ancient depictions of Gilgamesh, repeatedly showing carrying an adult male lion like a kitten, this image, in fact, shows an ancient giant carrying an elephant in each hand. And although this is clearly a remarkable detail, it is not the only features of note that are to be found within the picture. First brought to the attention of mainstream study in 1821 by the French mineralogist Frédéric Caillou, it has since been noted that the giant's features were seemingly Caucasian in appearance, with his hair a light red in color, something we have touched upon in the past with witness testimonies of ancient remains of red-headed giants being reportedly found worldwide, in particular Lovelock Cave. Thus, one wonders, could this be a true depiction of not only the builders of the Nubian pyramids, but possibly Giza's Great Pyramids and the many other either publicly studied or covered up structures found around the world? It is a possibility which we find incredibly compelling. We have, in the past, investigated the still unexplained, now lost, stonewalling technique, now commonly referred to as polygonal masonry. We have described the incredible feat that this technique involved, the mystery of how an ancient civilization once cut and perfectly fitted together these enormous jigsaw puzzles sometimes comprised of megalithic blocks weighing many tons in weight. However, we have also covered the coalescence of this polygonal technique with another, which has become known as Cyclopean within Italy, with the Cyclopean walls built upon those by those who possess the ability to create polygonal masonry, all but proving that this Cyclopean technique predated that of seemingly more competent polygonal technique. But just how old these techniques are, or indeed the age of these structures themselves, is now lost to history. However, our next area of interest may shed some light on these sites' considerable age, if you consider the evidence that the site itself presents. Known as the Pelasgic Wall, it is located upon a gigantic, once-leveled natural rock within the Acropolis of Athens. The wall, during the time of Thuclides, was claimed to have stood several meters high and six meters broad. It surrounded the entirety of the ruin, with a large visible fragment of the original wall, demonstrating this claimed scale still standing and located upon the southern side, close to the original entrance. Yet today, the beveling can be seen, but the wall has all but vanished, with the foundation of the wall laying below several feet of natural sediment buildup indicative of a tremendous age, said to have been built by the Pelagians, hence the name given to the wall. Not only does the sediment present at the site suggest a far more tremendous age, but the sheer size of the structure, along with the rock it now sits upon that was entirely leveled at some point within ancient antiquity, all points to an ancient feat far beyond the capability of known ancient Grecians. And just like that of polygonal masonry, predictably can be seen at sites just like that of polygonal, which are often surrounded by controversy when it comes to the claim construction and origin of said sites. We logically conclude that these attributions to different groups within known history, easily identified in other locations where these groups never ventured, 
is solid proof that those who state such false truths know they are indeed being deceptive. It is a ruin which we find highly compelling. It is now an undeniable reality that our planet's climate is changing. The pollution we as a species are creating atmospherically and environmentally is undeniable. And although many are oblivious to this effect, or sadly they simply don't care, there are countless others who are passionately invested in cultivation, salvaging, and repairing the damaged parts of our planet's habitats. Iceland, in particular, is taking on the climate shift in their country by using a method left by a lost civilization. Having minimal scattered and declining forest habitats in the country, top horticultural specialists are now seemingly mimicking a technique which, thanks to heavy historical research, is a method rediscovered for its origins being Peru, possibly during the polygonal era. And then the climate changes. The winters have become milder. Many of the trees that we planted in the 1950s, especially Siberian larch, are literally dying after several decades of being reasonably good. The genetics of forest trees are important these are all things that are genetically determined in the trees. And through the years, we've found the species that we can use, and now we're selecting individuals that are best adapted, bringing them together in a seed orchard and using their offspring in a forestation. Known as moray, its use was to acclimatize and then grow forests in places that the original parent plant species would have simply failed in. As stated by the lead directors of the project, quote, we are using a technique to regrow forests for the first time in over a thousand years, end quote. Referring to the supposed Incan site, Moray, a site in which we ourselves established its purpose via our own research, an enormous terraced garden which practiced strain selection and phenotyping. It consisted of growing out many plants, selecting plants with highest vigor, thus better established for said environment, raising their altitude with every selected generation, until, eventually, they could grow sea-level herbs, fruits, trees, and all other types of plants high above the clouds. We find the fact that Iceland is finally recreating intact, unbroken forest ecosystems with a prehistoric technique which, if applied in other areas of the planet experiencing decline in ecosystems with the utilization of modern technologies, could have immense potential. A truly genius creation. Its potential, if we apply our modern technologies to the ancient practice unraveled as the purpose for Moray is enormous. Growing food in otherwise once inhospitable countries, for example, Seeds created through exhaustive selective crossbreeding could create staple food crops, impervious to drought, or with the ability to drive a core into groundwater, which their ancestors could not. Moray not only proved the astonishing knowledge and ability of its creators, but also the potential in the incredible adaptability of plants over just a few generations, something we are again finally utilizing. Could these ancient ruins' ultimate legacy be that of the colonization of Mars? It is a resurrected ancient technology we have perused and mentioned for many years. And finally, the over 1,000-year-old masterpiece is now once again rebuilding forests. We undoubtedly find this highly compelling. There are many areas of physics, and indeed quantum physics, which can often leave one rather perplexed. Quarks, for example, the tiny elementary particles of matter, smashing into and destroying one another, instantly creating a new and sometimes entirely different pair of oppositely charged particles of matter. These strange things being what makes up the inside of a proton, an atomic nuclei, which, along with the electron, spins around the nucleus of the atom at tremendous speed, resonating at the frequency which makes up our reality and the solid objects we see all around us. These areas of physics, as mentioned, can leave one quite baffled when investigated too deeply in one sitting. Yet, such areas of science can also undoubtedly lead you to some rather wild conclusions. 
one of which involving our very own sun and a conspiracy regarding what could be powering it. It is the thing which allows us to see all the beautiful and the not-so-beautiful things within reality, worshipped since the birth of civilization. Yet, advances in technology have just added to our understanding of its complexity. The discovery of photons, charged particles which bounce off of the objects all around us, creating an instant interference pattern, or rather the absence of photons in the form of a shadow. This not only demonstrates that photons work just like electricity, but science has long confirmed that these particles emitted by the sun are indeed electrically charged particles. This fact of reality has now led some to take what others have asserted is a leap of faith, with many now having parted ways on their conclusions. The electric sun hypothesis. The hypothesis, supported by several rather strong scientific points, yet explained problems and or anomalies in current understandings, claims that the sun is in fact electrically powered, rather than the traditionally claimed process of fusion. It is a theory that has garnered quite a number of followers over the years, from various scientific fields, many with prestige. They have either claimed to believe this is the case, or that the theory could indeed one day be found to be true. Although, as always, it is those who passionately dismiss such claims, and their motives for doing so, so adamantly, that we find the most intriguing regarding such posits. Why do so many unexplained anomalies support the claimed hypothesis? Why do some so passionately object to it being studied within a field looking for definitive truths? We find the hypothesis, and indeed the controversy surrounding it, highly compelling.